Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here. And in this episode of Dig in Death, we're going to be talking about using namespace. Uh, but before that, I have to give a big thank you to Samuel Navares, who made a donation to the channel. Uh, thank you very much. That really helps uh, me to keep on um, going, creating more content like this. So anybody that wants to help out, uh, you'll find the link in the description of this video to the PayPal donation page and also on the channel homepage. Okay, so Samuel Navares, thank you very much. Um, the concept of, of namespaces is uh, common in different areas of technology. Um, you have, for example, the domain name system is, is a, a system of uh, mapping names to IP addresses on the internet and the domain name system provides namespaces for each domain so uh, within uh, a certain domain let's say example one.com you can have the host name www and in example 2.com you can have the same host name www and there, there would be no conflict because they are in separate namespaces well the same the same concept applies to programming we have here for example a constant a variable and a function definition here and if we were to try um, and basically duplicate this uh, these uh, definitions then you would see that uh, down here we have a series of errors it's telling us read declaration of pi okay and read declaration of x okay and read declaration of greet because uh, if we try to redefine uh, other constants or variables any type of, of name identifier um, inside a single flat namespace then we will have naming collisions like we see here so uh, in zig basically the the principal structure that we have to create namespaces is the struct so let's create for example here a struct called foo okay well, let's put this uh, here and let's create here a struct called bar let's enclose this here and now if we save this file you'll see that we don't have any type of error okay so even if within these uh, two structs we have a constant variable and a function with the same names there is no conflict there is no collision because they are separate namespaces okay so basically anything inside these curly braces is a namespace uh, per se and uh, another important uh, fact about how zig works is that when you import a, a, a file or a, a module uh, ba Zig basically treats it like uh, a separate namespace, uh, basically like like if it was a struct. Okay, so all of those uh, definitions inside of that uh, imported file are going to be treated as if they were definitions inside a struct, like we see here. And one example of that is uh, stud here. This constant uh, stud that we're defining, we are importing the stud module. And uh, that makes available all of the uh, definitions uh, available inside of that stud namespace, okay? Which, as we see here, debug is one of those uh, definitions inside of stud. And we could do uh, what's known in some languages, uh, a feature that's called mixing. So basically it lets you mix in declarations from one uh, data structure into another. Well, in Zig, you can do that uh, from one namespace to another using the keyword using namespace. So for example, let's say I create here a struct called my stud. Okay. And inside this uh, struct, all I have is using namespace stud. Okay, and what that means is that now here I could 
use mystud debug print, okay? Because uh, thanks to this uh, using namespace statement here, I'm basically mixing in all of the declarations inside of this namespace stud into my stud here, this uh, struct, which is indeed a namespace, okay? And um, you may ask why uh, you would want to do something like this. This is a, basically a very uh, contrived example, but this allows you to uh, basically define a very precise uh, structure for your uh, modules in Zig for, for the API that you want to expose. Um, because here we're basically uh, uh, making use of using namespace in a private fashion. But if this were a public struct and we can use the pub uh, keyword with using namespace, then uh, we would be making available these uh, declarations and definitions um, to uh, an outside uh, module. Okay, so let's see an example of that. This is uh, math.zig. This is uh, like a like a very very simple math library here, just for the example, um, where we have the different arithmetic functions: add, uh, subtract, multiply, and divide. Okay, and this uh, uh, file called GUI.zig, which also defines uh, a mock simple library for um, working with graphical user interfaces. Here we have this uh, widget uh, tag union, which is uh, basically implementing the interface technique that we saw in the interface episode um, using a tag union. And we have uh, two variants of this uh, widget here, the window and the button. And they all uh, basically are structs that uh, uh, satisfy the widget interface with the public uh, uh, draw method. Okay. Um, and we also have this uh, mock HTTP uh, library here, which has a uh, request uh, struct here, which is actually a generic function uh, that returns the struct. And we are receiving here a comp time uh, parameter called timeout, okay, which is of type u size. And we'll be seeing in a little while how uh, we, we make a special use case uh, of using namespace with this comp time parameter. But for the meantime, uh, this is basically returning a struct that has uh, these uh, fields here that are typical of a HTTP, HTTP request, the method, the path, the body. Here we have the timeout. And uh, then we are uh, making use of that timeout with using namespace, and we will be discussing this in a little while. And within this uh, main.zig here, we're going to have an example of how, with using namespace, we basically are unifying all those APIs, all those libraries into a single API namespace. So we are creating this constant libs here, which is a struct. And we're using namespace here with the import of uh, math, with the import of GUI, and with the import of HTTP. So basically all of the public uh, declarations and definitions that we have in these three libraries we are making them available within this libs namespace, okay? So here in main, we're going to see that uh, here we're calling uh, libs.add, which is one of the functions defined in the math.zig file. And now it's available in the libs namespace. And here we are defining widgets, okay? And we're uh, here the type specifying that it's a libs.widget which is actually in the GUI.zig library, okay? And uh, here we define two uh, uh, instances of the widgets, and we call their draw uh, method here in this for loop. And here we have an example of uh, creating a request from that HTTP library, which is once again available here in libs. We're first uh, creating here, uh, defining this type, request type, calling the generic function request with this uh, literal 10 here as the timeout. This is the comp time timeout parameter that we saw. 
And then using that type, we uh, are defining here this uh, request with timeout, um, specifying the field, the method, the path, and the body. Okay. And then we uh, have here a debug print precisely calling the get timeout method of that request type that we are uh, defining here. Okay. So let's take a look at how the output of this program looks. And as you can see, everything works. And we are making use of those different libraries all from a single namespace, uh, thanks to the using namespace keyword as we're using it here, okay? And here we're making use of this directly here in our file. So we don't have to use any public interface, okay? Because we're using uh, this libs directly in the main.zig file. But we have another example. Let's comment this out. And let's uncomment this. And now we're defining libs uh, as an import here of a file called libs.zig, okay? And let's take a look at that file. And as you can see, all we have in that file is these using namespace um, statements. But now we're using the pub keyword here. So all of those declarations that we're making, uh, mixing in here, making available within this namespace of the libs.zig file, we are making them public so we can access them from another file, which that's what we're going to be doing here in our main.zig, okay? We are uh, basically importing that namespace as libs, and then we can make use just like the local version we just saw in a little while. So if we try to run this again, you'll see that the output is exactly the same. So with using namespace, we can uh, reorganize and um, consolidate the API for our uh, project which allows us uh, the flexibility of dividing our, our files, our source files, however we need uh, in a logical way. And then we can unify the API as we see fit by using the using namespace mechanism, okay? And the last thing I wanted to mention, uh, which I brief briefly mentioned when we saw the um, HTTP uh, mock library here, let's go to that file is that one other use that you may find um, in zig code of using namespace is that you can basically um, when you're dealing with uh, comp time um, conditions you can basically have uh, conditional declarations being made uh, at compile time within a struct so here we have uh, this uh, struct that we have here, which is the struct that we're returning from this generic function uh, request. And here, as you can see, we have this pub using namespace. And since what uh, using namespace is expecting is an expression, then we can use an if statement here. And um, since this if is evaluating a comp time parameter here of the function that this means that that the context of this if expression is going to be at comp time this is going to be evaluated at comp time so this uh, using namespace if the timeout is greater than zero then the namespace that we're going to be mixing in is this struct which has a method here a function called get timeout okay um, and it uses the self here from this uh, struct, um, the enclosing struct here. And um, it returns a use size and it basically returns the uh, timeout field. Okay. But if timeout isn't greater than zero, then the struct that we're going to be mixing in is this struct, which is empty. So basically what this does is that it, 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 depending on a, comp, on a comp time variable here, which is timeout, we're going to be deciding if this struct that's going to be returned by request, by the request function, uh, whether it's going to have this method get timeout or not. Okay. So let's test that here. We are defining that generic uh, here timeout type and we're passing in 10. If we pass in zero, okay, and now try to run this program, 
we are going to see that we get a compile time error. It says no field or method um, function named get timeout. Okay, so basically, just by uh, changing a comp time um, uh, parameter here to this generic request function, we can decide if we're going to be uh, mixing in or making available a method. Okay, as we can see here, or if not. Okay, because this is then we'll be mixing in an empty struct. So we basically are not mixing in anything. So this is one technique that you may see in, in zig code, um, which is once again, one of the um, examples of how flexible and, and powerful the comp time uh, type handling in zig can be. And here I have this commented out. Now we can make use of this. Okay. So basically what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using the has decal built in and we're going to be testing if request type has the get timeout uh, method uh, declaration basically um, then we will make the debug print. So now let's clear the screen and as you can see now we don't get the error but we also don't get the, the last debug print that was printing out the timeout. Okay. If we uh, change this uh, here back to 10 and we run it again, now we do get the uh, debug print of the timeout 10. Okay, so with that, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover about using namespace. As you, as you can see, it, it has uh, basically uh, flexibility of uh, letting you define how your public API is going to be um, ex exposed um, to the users of your project, of your modules. And also it allows you to do uh, what we're doing here, which is basically conditional mixing in of any type of declarations, depending on any type of comp time uh, variable. Okay. So there's a lot of power here with the using namespace functionality in Zig. I hope you um, can make the most of it and find it uh, useful. Uh, do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.